Hey everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to have some fun with some applique. It's going to be an awesome experience and I'm going to try to explain it to you guys so that you guys understand applique. Real fast overview, applique to me is when a design has a whole bunch of a particular color and it takes the machine a long time to embroider that specific part, say like a circle with some text in between, with some text in the middle of the circle, you have a whole lot of um, stitches in that circle, right? So it takes the machine like a half an hour to embroider that circle. Instead of doing that, you can use a piece of fabric and you can just embroider a circle, right? And place the fabric on top of that embroidered uh, circle stitch, that single stitch, and then put a tack down stitch to tack down that fabric, right? Then trim the access of that fabric off, then do a satin stitch around that circle in order to uh, create the circle without having to wait like a half an hour and use a whole bunch of thread for the machine to embroider that circle. That's applique in a nutshell. It speeds up the process of embroidering complicated designs that have large fill areas. And you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. But um, let's get into it. Let's uh, step into my laboratory. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Boom, 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 just like that. Eight, 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 productions, just like that. Like, comment, subscribe, just like that. Boom, wait a minute, just like that. Hey, Dub, you ready? Wait a minute. So today we're gonna be using some felt material. I think that's what it's called. We got some red, we got some blue, we got some orange, and we got some green. We're also gonna be utilizing our Mighty Hoop. Shots out to Hoop Master, Hoop Made for the Mighty Hoops. These Mighty Hoops are a super, super time saver. If you have a multi-needle machine, you definitely need yourself some Mighty Hoops. I highly, highly, highly recommend you get yourself some Mighty Hoops because it's a big time saver. I got um, one, two, I think I got three. I got three of these things. Yeah, this size right here. I got a lot of the other ones too. So let's just dive into the project right here. We have our hoodie. Doesn't matter what hoodie you use. Obviously, we're gonna embroider across here. And let me show you guys how I use my Mighty Hoop. Um, so I'm gonna detach the bottom part from the top part right here. And I'm going to get a piece of, this is cutaway stabilizer. Lay it on top right here and measure something that's a little bit bigger than the Mighty Hoop. Grab my scissors over here and cut that piece of stabilizer. All right, giving you guys a play-by-play -play today. And then set this aside right here for a second. I'm gonna take my hoodie and I'm gonna to begin to roll it up. Roll it up so I can access the inside of this right here. Take this off if you want to hold on to it, put it right there. All right, get my hoodie nice and straight and flat. Make sure the strings aren't in there. And then I'm going to take my tear cutaway stabilizer and I'm gonna put it in there. This is going to help this stretchy material not be stretchy when it's embroidering. All right, don't need any spray adhesive or anything. The material is not that that super super stretchy but you know you don't need any of this so i'm putting this stabilizer right about here in this area right here make sure it's nice and flat all right and when you got that nice and flat in that area you go ahead and get your mighty hoop the inside of your mighty hoop there's this side with the writing on it make sure it's on this side and then you put that on the inside underneath the stabilizer all right that's the hard part, that's the hard part. It has a tab right here, a small tab right here, and a big tab on this side. Small tab, big tab. All right, so I'm just gonna put it in here, underneath here, and what I'm doing with my fingers is I'm feeling for that big tab, pushing it down. I wanna line it up right center right here, so I'm just getting a feel of it. And I'm looking at the seams right here, and I'm seeing, making sure it's even, all right? Even right here. And I'm making sure it's even right here and it's in the center right here. And when I think that's in a good position, I'm just gonna go ahead and snap it on. All right. Feels good to me. Then you just go ahead and snap that bad boy on. Look at the placement, excellent. Could be a little bit down some more. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna go ahead and, for, for, just for the sake of the video, 
lower that down just a tad, and then I'm going to snap it again. Perfect. Perfect. All right, let's put it in the machine now. But look how that Mighty Hoop just keeps everything together, though. Strong, strong magnets. Just keeps everything together. Look how easy that was to hoop. Nice flat surface. Let's put it in the machine now. All right, so we got our machine over here. I want y'all to pay close, very close attention to how I'm putting this in, okay? I'm gonna open up the neck. Open up the neck right here, and I'm putting the neck over top of this little bar. I'm making sure the Mighty Hoop is over top of the bar. I'm touching the collar to make sure it's going through. I'm placing both sides of the Mighty Hoop in there slanted. I'm pushing in slightly. I'm grabbing the neck and I'm opening up the neck and the hood and I'm pulling in with both of my thumbs. If you can see my thumbs right here, while I got the hood open up and my thumbs right here, I'm just gonna pull it back with my thumbs and it's gonna pop into place, all right? So I got the hood opened up so it's not gonna get jammed up in there and rub underneath here or anything like that. Then I take the laces and I just drop them to the side like that. And you could also grab the sleeves and put it in then you reach inside underneath of the uh, sweatshirt and you make sure that you did not accidentally hoop this part underneath this part. So it's gonna embroider together, make sure it's nice and open and all you feel is the arm right here and you have some space right here so you know it's not gonna embroider onto itself. And you're good to go. We're, we're all set up as far as this is concerned. Now let's set up our design on the, on the screen. On the Recoma EM1010, you are going to grab your thumb drive and you're gonna stick it into the side. There's a little slot on the side right there. Just stick that bad boy in there and then you're gonna go file. Right, and then you're gonna to navigate to the thumb drive. The reason why I went to here first, because I find when you just go straight to here, it doesn't, it doesn't register. So I go here first, then I navigate to the thumb drive, then I find my file. I found my file, I think it should be the last one, it's right here. And then you press this button right here to put that file into the machine. Loading. Now you navigate onto the, mach to the machine and that file should be the last one you added. And then you press OK. Now you can take this out because the file is actually inside of the machine, saved to the machine's memory. Now you gotta add your colors. And I'm gonna to try to explain this to you guys so it makes sense to you. Hit the colors, the little thing looks like a color. And my colors for this design is two, one, two, one, two, one. These are my threads on a machine. One, two, three, four. So one, two. Remember I said two, one, two, one, two, one. Black, white, black, white, black, white, right? All right, and those are my colors, all right? On number one right here, I'm gonna put a frame out, and on number one right here, I'm gonna put a frame out. Let me tell you what's gonna happen. Two is black, right? After it's done stitching out the black, the last square, it's the, the black, it consists of four squares. It's gonna be three, three black squares, then one white square. And the, after the one white square, it's gonna frame out. The reason why I made the last square white is because if I'd have made all four squares black, it would have just embroidered all four squares and it wouldn't, I wouldn't have, ha it would have made them one color and I wouldn't have had the option to add a frame out. So on the color that you wanna add a frame out, you have to make that a, a different color so that it gives you the option to add a frame. It doesn't make sense the way I'm explaining it and I can't explain it any better way, but when you get your machine, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So I added a frame out and that's gonna be my uh, placement stitch to tell me where to put the stitch down, where to put the material down. And then when I put the material down for the applique, it's going to tack down, this, this next frame out is my tack down stitch. After it does a tack down stitch of the material, it's gonna frame back out again and I'm gonna trim that material and then it's gonna start embroidering the, the full design. All right, got it? Uh, I hope you guys got it. Now I'm gonna put this on one. That's gonna make my machine go from needle number five, which is currently on, to needle number one. All right, the machine just moved to needle number one. I'm gonna press escape and I lock this up. Now we can trace. We can press this button right here so we trace. And tracing is gonna uh, show you exactly the perimeter where the design is going to embroider out. Let me hit that trace button 
needle number one is going to trace around and I'm looking to make sure it's in the center to my liking. All right, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. Again, I'm gonna look at it again when it gets to the center and compare it to my, where my pocket is. And that appears to be the dead center, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press start and watch what happens when I press start. It's gonna embroider one square, two squares, three squares. On a four square, after it's done, it's gonna frame out. All right, black, 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 then white, watch. All right, black square number one. Trim. And I got it on 700 stitches per minute right now. Black square number two. Trim. Black square number three. All right. Trim. Now it's going to give you a white square. White square number four. And then it's going to frame out after the square. All right just like that. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Mm -mm, frame out, damn. Now we're gonna place our materials on these squares, the applique material, so we don't have to embroider the whole thing, the embroider three, embroider four black squares, wasting all that thread. We're gonna do applique. So over here at our workstation, we have some materials and we're just gonna cut four squares that we can place on top of the squares, the placement stitches, right, of the design that we made, of the, uh, the applique, right? So we got one right here. We got one for the blue, right? Just, we're just estimating the size right here. Hopefully it fits, should fit. Orange join right here. Boom, boom, boom. That's about the size of that square right there. Be careful, we got our pinking shears to make sure the edges don't fray. And now we got our four pieces right here. Let's put it on. Back over here to our applique design. You guys should see, be able to see the squares, but let me move my light over a little bit just so you guys can definitely see it. So I'm gonna put my blue square over top of here because that's where I want it, right? Then I'm gonna put my orange over top of that one, right? I'm gonna put my Green join over top of cheer like that. I'm gonna put my red join over top of cheer like that. And then I'm gonna hit the frame in button on the screen of my machine. Pretty much the same button that I hit to set the frame button. I hit that button and watch what happens. Right back into place, baby, and ready to go. Now guess what it's gonna do? The second one is gonna do black, 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 white frame back out again all right let's make sure i got everything where i want it to be which i should have done before yeah everything's good these pieces are kind of big but let me show you guys what we're talking about right here here we go all right tack down stitch this is called a tack down stitch it's tacking the material down tack down stitch Tacking the material down. Next one. Understanding applique. Tack down stitch for the next color. Let me move the camera a little bit closer so you guys can see it. Can I adjust my, there we go. Next tack down stitch. Racoma EM1010. Or you can buy the big boy, the Recoma MT1501. Use my Recoma affiliate link in the description down below. Much appreciated. It helps the channel out a lot. It helps me grow in my path towards financial 
independence and keeps me encouraged to make videos like this for you guys to share ideas and ways that you can make money, supplement your income and leave that full time job that you kind of dislike. All right. So there you go. Or you might like your job frame out. And now we're going to take the design out and we're going to do the trim stitches. We don't have to take it out, but I'm going to take mine out because I feel like I have more control when I take it out versus trying to manipulate my scissors in here. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. Like some, some people leave it on. If it's a simple trim, you could leave it on. But right here, I feel like I don't have that much room to work with. So I'm going to take it out and take my time and trim all these, the little edges, get it as close to these edges as possible without trimming the actual tack, tack down stitch. So let me take it off. Push down right here with my thumbs. It's like a flick, flick and pull out and put it over on my table right over here behind me. Blah, blam, right there. Now we can start the trimming. So these are where these little specialty scissors come into play. They're very, very valuable. Grab a piece of that material right there and get close. I'm trying to move my hand so you guys can see how, get close, but don't cut that thread. Get real close on that line because you don't want any of this fuzzy stuff, this felt to show when, the, when you do the final stitch, all right? So let me just cut all of these off and then we'll be right back and get real close. Take my time, get real close, cut all these off and I'll show you guys the final result. Well, not the final result, but the result of us trimming off these applique, like doing our trim. So here is the results of our applique trims. We got as close as possible and to these stitches without cutting the stitches successfully. So we're going to have a clean embroider out without when our satin stitch goes around here, it shouldn't have any fuzz peeking out of the, um, of the design because we got really, really close. So we'll see how good we did. All right. Some things you can do in digitizing to avoid that and get even closer and get better results. But I think we should be good. Here we go. We're going to hold up our hoodie part, make sure that throat goes right in there. And of course, we pulled it right back out. <laughs> of course, we got to pull that up there and put that in there. Hold this open like so. You got to load this up carefully. You don't want your material to shift. You don't want this to shift in any way, shape, form, or fashion, or else your design will be compromised. You'll be screwed, right? So get that back in there. Cool. We got that back in there. And again, we check the bottom part to make sure everything is copacetic before we hit the frame back in button. Now everything is there, we hit the frame in button and it moves it right into place. If something was to be out of place and the hoop shifted or the, 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 the shirt shifted, you're kind of screwed at that point. So that's why you gotta be real careful or real precise when you're doing applique because if the lining goes off, the lining's off, there's nothing you can do about it. You can try to line it back up, but it's nine out of 10, it's not gonna work that well, um, yeah. So be careful. All right, so now I'm gonna put some plastic water dissolvable stable water Aquasoft topping at the, at the top of this right now, just like this. This piece is too small actually, so I'm gonna get a bigger piece. You could actually use multiple pieces if you want, so I'm just gonna use multiple pieces. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put this one over here. All right, so, so uh, maybe I'll do something like this, you know. Um, yeah, I'll do something like that. All right, and I'm gonna rip all this stuff off after it's done. How you guys like that shot I got you? All right, so we're just gonna hit start on the machine right here, and it's gonna start doing this thing. All right, it's gonna lay a bar across. How do I know? Because that's what I digitize. A bar across, then it's gonna do the stitch, then it's gonna do a stitch around, and then it's gonna do the whole thing. You'll see, you'll see. Let me get my zoom lens. I want to zoom in so you guys can get a better shot. I like the zoom in shots. Hold on. All right, so got my zoom lens. Um, now it's going to start laying down a satin stitch around the whole perimeter of the design. Boom. See it going around the whole thing. 
right there. Now it's gonna do the zigzag across. See that coming off? You gotta be careful that don't fall off right there. There we go. Laying down that satin stitch right there. There we go. That's that shot we wanna see right there. Gives you a whole different perspective on things right there. You see it doing the first square. Doing the first square right now, and then it's gonna go to the next square after it's done this. Actually, it's gonna um, embroider the, all the stuff on here. we got stuff on here, stuff right there. It's gonna embroider all that. You know, so let's just continue letting this do its thing. And you know, this the like I said, this is the Rakoma EM1010. Fantastic embroider machine. You can make lots of money with this. I got two of these. Use my Rakoma affiliate link if you want to purchase yours today. Hit them up. They have excellent financing. See what they can get you guys. You guys see it in action working. One person was like in the comments was like. I, uh, it wasn't a Wacoma video, but it was another video. I think it was for the Rico. I don't know. I forgot what video it was, but he was like, I liked the video until I found out you were an affiliate. Oh, it was the heat press video. It was a heat press video where I compared the three different heat presses. I just want to address this real fast. He was like, I liked the video until I found out you were an affiliate. Uh, you just want, you just want us to click your link and, and buy the product so you can get paid off of it. That's not how he worded it, but you guys can go check out that video, the, the video where I compared the three different heat presses. Check out the comment section, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Very, very interesting, I found it. So I'm like, I'm like, what's your point? I compared the three heat presses and gave you my honest opinion on all three heat presses. Like, what do you want? You know, of course I'm gonna, of course I'm gonna give you my affiliate link and hope that you use my affiliate link so I can get a small commission. This is what I do. So I, I asked him, like, what's the difference between me doing it and the other millions of YouTubers doing it? What's the difference? Did you go on all their videos and, and type that to them? Or is it just me? Inquiring Minds wants to know on Black History Month. Is it just me? Am I special? Or, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I just found that to be interesting that uh, that's even a thing. It's a normal thing. It's like, you know, these companies make millions of dollars. Why not give the little man a little percentage at absolutely no extra cost to you? So find your favorite influencer whenever you're shopping and always use an affiliate link because by helping them, you help yourself. It keeps us going to create content like this. It keeps us motivated. It keeps us, you know, you know, some months are good, some months are bad. And it's a thing, you know. So, yeah, use my affiliate link. It is what it is. I don't know why people get bent out of shape sometimes. Some people. But it's like, in that video, I was still giving you a comparison, my fair analysis of all the machines. And I'm going to continue to give you my fair analysis based on the experiences that I'm having with these machines. And you guys see the experience that I'm having right now with this machine, with your own two eyes. I plan on doing a video about this machine where I intentionally loosen the tension and I give you guys scenarios where okay you might have a thread break I'm gonna purposely make the machine break the thread then you know back up fix the situation and embroider it again so you can see how to get out of thread breaks do a bird nest on purpose show you guys how to prevent prevent that bird nest um, loosen up the tension a whole lot and make the machine have loose loops and stuff like that when embroidering and show you guys how to fix that situation. And when you're able to fix all those situations, then you can have results like this, right? And not listen to those people who say, oh, this machine doesn't work, or it doesn't work for me, I don't work, but, 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 but. That's because you didn't push the buttons, you didn't twist the knobs. But anyway, be right back, guys. <laughs> Talking too much. Here you guys are with that wide shot to help you put things in perspective to see where we are with this design. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can get in a little closer on the action right here. We got the Rakoma EM1010 getting busy. Bring my light over here. Light up the situation a little bit. Let me focus in a little bit. See if I can get that dialed in for you guys. There you go. Boom. Switching over to the top part right there. See the EM1010 getting me? Look at the quality of these stitches though. Look at the quality. Look, watch this, watch this. Look, look, look. 
Look, look at that. Look at the quality. Look at the... Yeah, yeah. So over here, you see the final results, man. We're going to take this thing off and take some of this uh, Aquasoft off, this uh, dissolvable topping off, and check out the final results. Let's take it off. So you see we got our Aquasoft on there. What I love about this stuff is it's real easy to take off the access. You just peel it off just like that. Easy peasy. And what it does is it makes sure that the design, that the stitches stays on top of this thick fabric right here so that you don't lose any um any details or anything like that so i'm just gonna get in here and take out as much as i can and then i'm gonna run a little bit of water on top of the uh access and it'll just automatically dissolve you guys will see in a minute but this is kind of like um kind of satisfying a little bit to peel this stuff off you know you get a little bit of peel effect peel enjoyment if you will. Boom, so you guys saw me do it. I hope this helped you understand the process of applique a little bit better. A little bit, you know, because I'm making this video, it seemed a little long, but it does in fact make the embroidery process a lot easier when you use material for larger areas rather than use thread to embroider little teeny tiny stitches. This design, as you're looking at it, is available on allenaway.com right now as you're watching this video. So head on over there and get your sweatshirt today. Please allow a little bit of lead time because I am making these by hand, myself, individually, which makes them a little bit more special. Something, a keepsake that you guys can hold on to because um, it's part of the journey. You guys can see where I came from and where I am, am right now and where I'm going to be probably next year or the year after that. So stay tuned for all those great great things to come and guys if you're not subscribed to the channel if you're not subscribed to the channel if you saw any value in anything that i provided to you anything i showed you anything across the channel just go ahead and subscribe share the videos give this video a thumbs up subscribe to the channel like comment down below let me know what you guys want to see in the next video as a matter of fact i think we're going to do the viper mini versus the wagner spray gun i want to show you guys how exactly i pre-treat my shirts to get good clean quality solid prints using the wagner spray gun exclusively but um don't forget to follow me on tiktok adub productions instagram adub productions facebook adub productions and i'll see everybody on the next video talk to you guys later bye turn up that crank it up while i listen to the rest when you're rocking with the best baby